Good afternoon, boys and girls, and welcome to episode 84 of Love at First Scent with me, Percy Lace, coming to you today from YouTube. Um, uh, thank you very much for tuning in, whoever has tuned in. I'm just going to quickly go on the tablet to make sure that everything is coming through, which it appears to be. Uh, I hope you're all safe and well, wherever you are. Um, the plan for today, let me just get, I'm not happy with that. All right, let's get that straight. The plan for today is that we're going to do two single um, perfume episodes. I haven't done uh, one of those for a little while because there are a couple of new releases um, that I wanted to bring to your attention. Keep the comments coming. I'll, I'll go through them as soon as I can. So today we're going to start with a new one from Penhaligons. Uh, we'll, I would imagine we'll spend something in the region of 10 minutes talking about it, depending on how many comments you make. And then we will take a brief break, allow... Um, Hang on, sorry, there's a Gordon Ramsay advert on my tablet that I think I would just like to skip. Yes, thank you very much, as much as I admire his culinary skills. And then we will give YouTube a few moments to do whatever it needs to do uh, in terms of wrapping up the video. And then we will come back with a brand new release from none other than Serge Lutin. So I hope you will be able to stick around for both of them. I think we need to get straight into this one, though, and um, start spraying. I am not going to say a, a huge amount about... Uh, the the favorite. This is one of the two new releases, so there you go. Quick shot of the bottle. And if you're thinking, um, <laughs> I've just seen that comment. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll read the comment in a sec, but I've just seen it. If you're thinking that maybe, can you see the name there? It's called the favorite. Thank goodness they've spelt it the English way. If you're thinking that maybe it may have been inspired by um, the, the, the film from last year with Olivia Coleman. Um, which was about the favourite friend of Queen Anne, then you would be absolutely right. Now, when I found out about these two releases, and when I got the, um, the press information uh, for them and I went through it, so yes, these are probably press releases at which I have already had a very quick glance, I thought that this would be the more intriguing one, because it's basically supposed to be uh, a light mimosa-like floral, and I find mimosa notes very, very interesting. Um, uh, and and I was intrigued by this one because this is one of this one here. The other one that we're actually going to focus on is one of the Trade Roots collection. And I'm not overly enamoured by the Trade Roots collection. I think a lot of what it does in terms of um, delving into the genre of Arabian style perfumery is 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 fairly cliched. And I and I think it. If we can generalise about the perfumes, I think they rely too much on the effects of synthetic sandalwood. But anyway, it's always nice to be surprised because I tried this one and I've decided that actually it's little more than a pleasant, gauzy floral, you know, where every the, the light seems to be diffused through, you know, every, every, you're like sort of seeing the, the world through muslin um, and, and that's fine. But this one, actually, I am quite taken with. So that's the one I'd like to start with today. I don't know if you can make out the name there, but this is called Babylon. Um, and I promise I'm going to get to all of these comments, so please um, keep them coming, keep questions coming. This is called Babylon. You probably can't see the name very well there because of the reflection. I need to remind myself to hold it up and then look at the camera and pause for a moment and give you all a sultry glare, glance, sultry look, <laughs> sultry glare. Um, maybe maybe you are right about the, t the, the shirt. Um, while I pause for a thumbnail, I always, always forget to pause for a thumbnail. So, is that enough for a thumbnail? Let's spray this. Um, and it has to be said that th this doesn't do anything terribly new. Um, but I think it, it does what it does very well. If any of you out there are aware of um, the Hermès Sans perfume by Jean-Claude Elena, um, Ombre Narguilé or Ombre Narguil, um, then you will have some idea of what this smells like. And actually, that's territory that Penhaligons themselves have already explored. Um, in, in a, they, they released a trio of scents a while ago that were inspired by different parts of London. I think there was a sort of Kensington and a Marleybone, and, I, but, and, and they were all, to some extent, copies, you know, inspired by other, so there was one that was very much inspired by Portrait of a Lady, there was one that was, was inspired by Ombre Narguilé, and there was one that was inspired by um, 
uh, black Afghano. Um, and, and I honestly cannot remember which one was which. It's the, the reviews are on the blog. And this goes back into that Amre Narguilé territory. But I think it has enough of a personality of its own to make it worth checking out. I'm, I'm quite taken with this. It, it, it must be one of my favourite Penhaligans for quite some time. Um, which is saying something because it's, it's a brand that I think is, is still going through something of a personality crisis. I just saw out of the corner of my eye, and I promise I'm going to get to the comments, somebody saying that maybe I ought to do a video on my favourite Penhaligans. And actually, I've been thinking that because it's, it's, it's worth giving um, the brand some time. It, it's a brand that doesn't seem to be entirely sure about um, what it wants to be, who it wants to be. And I've said this several times before. And my, my estimation is that they haven't yet made up their mind about who they want to be because there is this real disparity between the sort of ye olde England um, aesthetic of scents and the direction that they're going in with um, the trade routes and with those perfumes which have got those, you know, those ghastly caps um, that look like a sort of cross between animals and Cluedo figures, although that range has been extremely successful for them. Um, and maybe they're just trying to corner as many markets as possible, but then apparently they're also doing quite well. So, you know, who knows? But what have we got here before I look at your comments and read the press release? This is, this is a sort of a smoky amber, as you would have guessed by the fact that I'm saying that it's en renarguilé. But I think what I like about it is that there's a really, really nice saffron note running through it, um, which just dries everything out wonderfully and gives it, uh, gives it a feeling of seriousness, I think. Um, and just generally, the spices, it is very, very spicy, so it's a super spicy amber. The spices have been very well judged, so you know, you've got, you've got nutmeg, you've got cinnamon, you've got, uh, very definitely, I would have thought, cardamom, and for once the trade route concept, trade routes concept actually works here and gives us a blend that is convincing. Um, whereas with some of the other ones, because of their over-reliance on synthetic sandalwoods, I find that actually convincing is the last word that I could use about them. Um, there is a flanker that they've done as well. One of the, the, one of the best-selling ones from that collection is Halfetti, which a lot of you will be aware of. Again, I'm not crazy about Halfetti, and now they've done a flanker called Halfetti Leather, which I guess has the leather note amped up. I've yet to smell that. Um, it'll be interesting to see what, what they've done with that, but my overarching impression of this is of this very, very real connect, collect, um, conjuring of um, smoke, okay? So it, 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 it's like, there are these spice granules that are that are floating around on these wafts of beautiful, you know, shisha smoke. Um, and it just works, it works. And, and there's a kind of Victorian feel to it as well, I suppose. I mean, you know, not that we want to kind of have perfumes that are reminiscent of opium dens and things like that, but it feels as though it's drawing you into quite a mysterious, ancient sort of world. Um, and as I say, this one, this one has got a thumbs up for me so far. So far, I've worn it a few times. We will have to see how it does um, the blotter test. Before I look at the comments, because this is a, a sort of more regular episode of Love at First Send, where we're not doing a best of or a rundown of my favourite perfumes from a single note, etc., etc., I should say, um, uh, please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so. Please give me hearts and likes and thumbs up and leave questions, leave comments. I usually get round to all of the comments, as long as YouTube tells me about them. I've discovered in recent weeks that there's a whole load of comments that YouTube never notified me about, which is annoying to say the least, because I'm not sure how I'm meant to know about having received a comment if I haven't had a notification. But anyway, I suppose every now and then I'll just have to go tra trawling through to see if I've missed anything. Please consider supporting my work on Coffee. You will see the links to all of that below. And also, because we try not to make um, overly final judgments on perfumes. 
we need to stress that these are first impressions and a few hours after the broadcast I tried to do a what we call a blotter update to tell you how the scent has developed on the blotter. Now there have been so many comments going through as I've seen so let me lots and lots of hellos huge hello and thank you to all of you for tuning in Joao, Peggy, Umberto, Frederick, Ashfaq, was that DCJIMR1 um, and Ashfaq said the shirt reference was, oh, you're wearing your rant shirt. Looking forward to today's episodes even more. I don't think there's going to be ranting today, but the colour of this is significant to the Serge Lutin's scent that we are doing after this one. By the way, if you're watching the recording and you haven't got a clue what I'm talking about, I will link to the Serge Lutin's um, a review in the video description below as well. Uh, Andre is in Manchester, Shimon says hi, Fahmi, Gino, Sabra, Fabi from Germany, Hoiting Kimberly Fung from Hong Kong, Peter VK from Chicago, hope everyone is doing uh, well and staying safe, absolutely. Ashfaq says I have Alizarin, is that, what do you think of that one then? Frag, Chai Tan is in Chicago, Chang is in Paris, Kerry is in Zagreb, and Pine Rock says the highlight of my day. Thank you very much, that's very, very kind, thank you. Uh, Gino was the one who said should we do a Top Pen Halligan's video. I think it's worth thinking about actually because there are some really, really good scents in that brand that I think get buried in the sheer number of releases that they keep pushing out. Uh, Angie says, I like the bottle and the name. Yeah, good point, actually. Uh, Ashfaq says, those three perfumes that I mentioned before, they were almost clones, weren't they? Yeah. Hello from Edinburgh, says Andy. My whole family are watching today. Hello, family. Today I'm wearing Blenheim Bouquet as my search for a Granville replacement continues. Well, if you're wearing Blenheim Bouquet, I expect you know this, but apparently you smell like James Bond because I am reliably informed. I haven't read any of the original Ian Fleming Bond novels, but apparently in, it, in one of them it is mentioned that he wears Blenheim Bouquet, which actually makes sense because he wouldn't want to wear something that is um, too in your face, would he? You know, he, he would want to be able to blend into the background. Evo is in Berlin. Uh, Ashfaq says they're releasing too many since the takeover, especially in the last two, two and a half years. Byzantine says I love Cornubia. I, I loved Cornubia at some point in my life. I found it shockingly similar to Lulu by Cacharel. Interesting point but way older. How could this not have been given any attention in any type of group form? I wonder if Cornubia is still even in their range. I'd have to check it out because I know they, they discontinued lots and lots of things when they streamlined, you know, changed their packaging after the takeover by Pooch. Please don't forget Floris, says Angie. In, in, in what regard? As in a, a brand to look at, like a sort of ye old English brand, in which case you're right. Uh, Ashwag says, I'm wearing an 11-year-old Hainan Oud Oil, quite fitting for trade routes. Absolutely. Elisa says, greetings from Latvia. Hi. So glad to catch you online for the first time. Thanks for tuning in. By the way, just ordered myself Lady Blanche from Ben Halligans. Interesting. Anna is in Germany. Everyday Product says, hello. Uh, do you Have you heard anything about a new Hermes Men release coming out? Uh, no. Nope. News to me. Uh, Umberto is wearing Gold Man. Uh, we've got Nubianet from Oakland, California. Peggy says, Raquettes by Penhaligans was a great favourite of mine until they retired it. I'm down to possibly the last bottle ever. As a company, they have lost their way somewhat. See, I'm wondering more and more whether that's us thinking that they've lost their way, and whereas actually commercially, they have hit a kind of sweet spot. I don't, I don't know. Uh, April Spritz says, Penhaligans portrait series with all the made up back... Thank you, portrait, that's it. With all the made up backstories is so tiring. Yeah, the backstories just, just get tedious after a while. And, and and to be honest, with the most recent backstories, I, I just haven't even bothered. I've just thought, okay, just let me smell the perfume. I like Hamam Bouquet, says Aperol Spritz, and Pisebi says hello. So I think it's time for a press release. Gosh, we haven't done a press release for a while, have we? So And, and, and fear not, the press release for this one is not terribly long. So let us go to it. Feels quite novel doing a press release now, doesn't it? Babylon. The mysteries of Mesopotamia, at once remote and all around. What earthly magic lies behind the stories of Babylon? What mysteries of Mesopotamia lie untold? I feel like I should be reading, um, oh, in, in Kublai Khan, you know, do, um, like, uh, oh, it's the, what am I talking about? Um, it, it's, it's the opening from Citizen Kane, isn't it? Is, it? is it Shelley? This is really bad that I've forgotten. It is Shelley. 
It, never mind. You will tell me.、Um, an antique den of iniquity, or the majestic Coleridge. Thank you. Or the, an antique den of in- iniquity. I knew you guys would know. Or the majestic wonder of the ancient world. A totem of civilization. The fruit of mankind's divinely inspired towering into the skies and the world's own potential. This press release is doing well so far. Humanity and nature at the apotheosis of symbiosis. I've missed press releases, haven't you? A city of lush plantations and laws. That must be lawns, surely. It says laws, I assure you. It says L A W S. A city of lush plantations and lawns, surely. I can't imagine. What, what's a lush law? <laughs> Oh, I'm going to. Never mind, let's look at the epicenter of an empire with the mathematical miracles of palaces, temples, and gates.、Uh, the confluence of engineering. Sorry, this is a question, right? So it ends with a question mark. I should be going the confluence of imagination, engineering, and design? Nobody really knows. And so the mystery grows. Okay, that hasn't really told us anything. Let's go on to the next page. A decadent warmth is, is bathed in vanilla. Okay. And otherwise powerful and deep textures, sorry, wake up, Persilates, and otherwise powerful and deep textures are crafted into a whole that is endlessly voluptuous and smooth. Distinguished notes of sandalwood and cedar are brought to life with saffron and nutmeg, the blend permeated with the addictive scent of vanilla, quietly reminiscent of the reassuring smell of the divine. The reassure, so you know, if you were to smell God, you'd go, Oh, that's such a reassuring smell, God. I'm so glad you smell. <laughs> like you, one day when you meet your maker, you go, Oh, that's such a reassuring odor you've got around you, God. Quietly reminiscent of the reassuring smell of the divine. Okay, let's park that one to one side. The, 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 the ingredients that they've listed in the notes are coriander, saffron, nutmeg, Cypriol, cedar, sandalwood, and vanilla, to which I would say, yes, I agree.、Um, I need to see what comments you guys have been making on this because I'm sure there have been some good ones. I just want to smell it actually because it, it's the tobacco y feel of this, you know, that makes me think of the shisha. The perfume is so much better than the press release.、Uh, what have we got? We've got, we've got lols, we've got. Uh, Byzantine saying, yes, Cornubia has been discontinued, but I've been told at their boutique at Covent Garden that there are still a few bottles in some of their boutiques. Okay. Arkandiush says, I was looking so much for the Penhaligon's Babylon review. Thank you, Persilais. You're very welcome. Peggy says, Are they referencing the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, formerly one of the seven wonders of the world?、Uh, well, I wondered, you know, because for, for a while I actually thought. There was imagery of towers, and I thought, oh my goodness, have they really messed up? And are they thinking Tower of Babel? And they've gone for. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. Let's not read too much into it.、Uh, Shimon says somebody's having a field day. Absolutely. Gino says, I wear Tragedy of Lord George to work, and it works wonders. Fantastic. Love the barbershop and boozy scent. Ashfaq says, Is that a PR written with COVID 19 in their mind? Who knows? Let's not go there. Johnny says, Greetings from Alabama. Thanks for tuning in. Dream of me no more. Oh God, I was watching RuPaul's Drag Race when I should have been watching this. Ah, <gasps> How dare you? How, how even dare you? <laughs> Get back here. I've never seen RuPaul's Drag Race. Banana Tang says, Penhaligon's Babylon with some similar notes with Prada Babylon, which I enjoy. Intrigued. Druba, hello. That press release was quite a laugh. On another note, I've been waiting to try the blasted. Blasted? I'm being slow now. I don't get it. Angie says, Oh, time to get some more Cornubio. Yes, absolutely. So,、um, don't hold the press release against it. Don't expect it to be wildly original. It's like a spicier, sweeter Omre Narguile. But, but it works. And you know, actually, the thing that it made me, and, and I'm reminded of it again, do you remember the very, very short lived.、Um, The very short lived Jean Paul Gaultier send called Cocorico, which had that absolutely genius bottle, one of the best perfume bottles we've ever had, I think, where if you sort of looked at it head on, you saw a bunch, and if you looked at it、um, sideways, I think. So this way, I think it was meant to be Gaultier's profile, but this way, you made out the outline of、um, the, the usual Le Mal bottle. 
there's something of that. I thought Cocorico worked quite, quite well. There was something sort of vanillic, tobacco-y about it in there. Um, and this is um, reminiscent of that. So, you know, it, 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 it's not reinventing perfumery by any means. It's not going to be one of the best scents in the, in the Van Halligan's collection. But I think it actually does what it does very well. Let me just quickly uh, read some more comments before we pause for a few minutes and come back with the new Serge Lutins. Uh, Druba says, Blasted Heath and Blasted Bloom. Oh yes, of course, the aquatic take they had on berries and sea salt seaweed. Arkandiush says, as always, off-topic question. I may not be able to answer it, sorry. Will you be doing clean reserve collection in the near future? Oh yes. I think I've got samples of those somewhere. My initial impression of those was not overly positive, but maybe um, I'll go back to it. Uh, uh, Shimon says, I remember that one being very chocolatey, the Cocorico. Maybe. Uh, figgy chocolate, wasn't it? So maybe I'm maybe I'm somehow reminded of the, the sort of vanillic bitterness that was in there. But, but anyways, some, something just made me think of that. Right, so blotter update will be in the video description a little bit later on. Uh, but for now, thank you very much for watching. If you are watching live, please stick around because I would imagine in about five minutes we will come back uh, with the latest release from Serge Lutens. So stay safe. See you soon. Bye.